The fearsome ancient Sith Lords, beings of such primordial darkness that they were regarded as gods of the Force. Sith like Naga Sadao, Karnas Mur, and Marka Ragnos, all extensively powerful lords in their own right who ruled at a time when the Sith Empire was weaker than it would be in the later eras, such as during the era of Darth Revan, Darth Vitiate, and many others. These spirits have all gone on to become exceptionally powerful Dark Lords. However, there remains one constant between Ragnos, Sadao, Mur, Frieden Nat, Exar Kun. All of these previously mentioned Sith Lords have all at one point become Sith spirits or have sustained their life through alchemical and magical desires. Similarly, Darth Plagueis was very unentranced with the mysticism of the Force and believed that the mysticism of the Force was not something to be studied. He did not adhere to it as a religion or a doctrine. He merely had the science of studying it and desired to learn more about it, treating it like a science or a learning book, so that way he could learn how to prolong his life in order to enact the Sith Grand Plan alongside his apprentice Insidious. However, today we are going to be exploring the Sith Lord that Darth Cray and Darth Plagueis encountered on Korriban. The Sith Lord, that Darth Plagueis, undisputedly one of the most influential and powerful Sith Lords to have ever lived, encountered on the desolate Sith homeworld of Korriban that had been dead for 5,000 years. The following monologue ends from the Book of the Sith, Secrets of the Dark Side, personally one of my favourite Star Wars books to ever exist. The most accessible lore concerning life and death is found in the holocrons of the Sith. Indeed, the Sith holocrons are said to contain the spirits of their builders, and these spirits interact with users as holographic gatekeepers. But all of this is a slate of a hand, a programmed artificial intelligence that wears the face of a long dead lord. This statement is correct. Darth Endedu imbued a portion of his consciousness within his own holocron, which Darth Bane and Lord Tyrannus would eventually come to acquire and would teach their respected pupils, with Darth Bane learning the fabled art of essence transfer and Count Dooku gifting it as an antique and trinket to Quinlan Vos, who he had recently seduced to the dark side. More interesting are the tales of Sith ghosts said to haunt everything from the tombs of Korriban to the relics inside Coruscant's great galactic museum. Is it possible that these masters of the dark side succeeded in preserving their awareness? If so, can they still be query for their secrets? Unfortunately, I have been to Korriban, and I am not convinced that these tales hold true. City has actually noted that the spirits on Korriban were actually real, and that he had personally seen them. Also, Luke Skywalker, after 11 ABY, noted the following. Anyone who dismisses the existence of the Sith spirits has never fought one. It took every Jedi in my academy to defeat the spirit of Exar Kun. Now, we move on to the second quote. The tomb of Hakagram Grass remains silent to my queries, and the throne where Saul's the sin once sat contained no mocking, imperious spectre. I was ready to conclude that the tales are merely diversions for the credulous, but as I boarded the ship in the Valley of the Dark Wars, I beheld a vision of Sith Lord Marka Ragnos. The apparition challenged my claim to the Sith title, and rallied against my plan to dismantle the traditions of Korriban. But the vision of Ragnos would not answer my questions, nor my delinted inquiries. He snarled and disappeared in a whirl of smoke. Is it possible that the entire episode simply played out in my mind? There is one spirit encounter that would truly intrigue me, however. I would enjoy questioning my master Darth Tenebris to see if he anticipated my growing power, and whether he knew I might destroy him on Baldemic. I wonder what Tenebris would think of all his apprentice has achieved since that day. As from the previous monologue, we can see that Darth Plagueis made contact with the ancient Sith Marco Ragnos, one of the most notorious Dark Lords to ever have existed, and widely regarded as the usherian of the Golden Age of the Sith Empire, and one of the most powerful Sith in galactic history. There is an argument for a version of Ragnos to be placed alongside someone such as a pre-prime Grandmaster Luke Skywalker, far above someone like Sadao and Luda Kresh. However, that's an argument for another video. So, my friend, what did you think of this video? I see that your tenacity for knowledge has greatly expanded. Your potential in the Force is noteworthy. Very well. Tomorrow, we are going to be releasing a banger of a video. A video that none would be anticipating, yet all will watch. Farewell, my acolytes. I'll see you in a galaxy far, far away. Keep your wits about you. And remember, the Force will be with you, no matter how dark and treacherous the path ahead may seem.